Hello, my name is Marcus and this is Motion Graphics and Cheese. This time around I'm going to show you how I would create this fire distortion effect. As you can see here, there's some blurriness, some distortion, some heat emanating from the fire. So let's get to it. And maybe even find out why beetles are infatuated with pigs. This time around I have been using some footage that I got from this website called Pexels that I'm a big fan of, as you can see here. This footage I've gotten from Engine Accurate, it's a name which I'm probably butchering right now. You don't even need to give attribution, although it is of course appreciated, and it's based on donation. So you donate to people that, whose pictures or whose videos you use and that you really appreciate. So give it a look. So here we have a completely clean composition. You can see it's just the fire roaring here in the background. So let's start that by creating a new solid. So this is going to be our distortion, which I apparently can't write. Distortion map. And on this layer, let's apply a good old fashioned fractal noise. Love fractal noise, probably a little bit too much. Just gonna quickly play around with these settings. I'll probably change them in a smidge anyway. Um, something like this, uh, maybe five in complexity. Okay, so I'm gonna hide this temporarily. Because we only want to distort where the fire is, I'm gonna start by making a mask. I go up here and I click on the pen tool. I'm gonna make a quick mask here, something nice and soft, something along these hair lines. I am. Now I'm gonna press F to get the feather of the mask. I'm gonna press, what, 250? Now let's activate this layer again. So right now it has alpha behind it and we don't want that. So we're gonna apply a solid composite. We're gonna make it 50% in brightness. Because distortion effects are gonna look as black as distorting one way and white as distorting another way, you wanna make sure that the outside of the mask is not being affected at all by the distortion. If you want to only distort in the white, we can actually apply a tint effect below the composite and make the black 50% in brightness. This way it would only be the brightest values that are going to change and not the black values. So let's hide this. Now let's create an adjustment layer. Let's see here, adjustment layer. I'm going to call this distortion. And I'm going to apply an effect called Displacement Map. Where are you? Right there. So right now it's distorting absolutely everything. We don't want that. So let's select the Distortion Map layer. Let's say that we wanted to look at the effects and the masks. We wanted to only look at luminance in both channels. And let's say it should be 30, whoops, 30 and 30. So let's play around with the scale here. Let's say 350, something like this. Probably way too big. 150. And let's start by animating this noise so we can see some movement in it. So let's alt click on evolution and let's write time times uh, 500. So it's going to take whatever the current time is and it's going to multiply it by 500. So it's quite snappy. And let's all click on offset turbulence here. And let's start by making writing A, which is just a variable that we're going to write. Let's say 350. And down here, because the offset turbulence has two coordinates, we're going to have to start with a brackets. And we're going to write time times A comma, time, times A. So basically they're both being affected by this value that we're writing in, times times, huh, times time. And we're gonna set it to go negative so it goes up and to the left. Oh yeah, that's the way we like it. All right, so we can always exaggerate the distortion if we feel like it's not meeting our very demanding needs. So let's create a new solid here. Let's go up here, new solid. And let's call this bad boy the blur map. 
All right, let's place this below the distortion. And once again, let's apply a fractal noise. All right. So this is going to have a lot of contrast. So let's just pump this contrast up and take down the brightness and maybe even more contrast, something like this. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did on the distortion map layer. I'm going to out click on evolution, time times 400. And I'm going to out click on offset turbulence, exactly the same, A equals minus 350. Semicolon, let's move this up. And then start bracket time times A and comma time times A. There we go. We're going to create a new adjustment layer here. We're going to call this uh, blur. Yeah, let's just call it blur. And on this bad boy, let's apply the lens, camera lens blur. And under blur map, we're going to select the blur map, obviously. We're going to make sure that its effects and masks are uh, enabled. You can see it's already blurring a little bit, but it's not really blurring enough. So let's take it all the way up to 30, something like this. That's probably a smidge too much, maybe 20. To make sure that they both have the same mask, we can press M on distortion map. I'm going to copy this mask onto the blur map, then press M to expose it. And then I'm going to out click on the blur map mask and pick whip it to the distortion map mask. This way, if I change this mask on the distortion map and go back to the blur map, you can see it has been changed as well. This way we can guarantee if we change the mask, it's going to update on both layers. So now it's starting to look like something, right? You can see the, the blurriness, the heat effects. Now let's start to look at the fire itself. So first of all, I'm going to duplicate this bottom layer, the fire footage. I'm going to call this highlight. I'm going to isolate it by clicking on the little solo button here. I'm going to apply an effect called image wipe. That's right. It's not just for wiping, it's for image wiping. Now we're going to increase the completion so that we're left with only the bright parts of the flame. Now we're going to apply a fast blur because we want to blur this brightness. Uh, something along these here lines. Eh, acceptable. Now we're going to apply a hue and saturation because we want to apply some more color to it. And let's click on colorize down here. Let's just fully saturate it for the moment. And let's turn on to something orange. Maybe we can decrease the brightness so that there's more color. Maybe something along these lines. And then let's toggle switches and modes. And let's change the blending mode to screen. Something like this. So let's unsolo this layer. Now you can see that it has a little bit more of a nice little glow around it. And we can, if we press T for opacity, like a manatee, and I'll click on it. Let's just apply a little bit of a wiggle here. Nice little wiggle expression. Let's say 6 and 30. That way it's going to blink a little bit all the time. You know, it, it's going to have, you know, that flicker, that nice fire flicker. You can give it a curves adjustment. And then you can go down here to the alpha and just boost the crap out of it for a second here. Maybe we can make it a little bit more orange instead of red, you know, something, uh, something like this. Maybe we can increase how often it happens, maybe 12 times per second. And now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, can't we make this fire warmer? You know, you really want to be able to feel the warmth. And of course we can. So let's take this fire footage, let's duplicate it. Let's call it warmth, because that's what we want. And we go over here, let's go, let's apply here a fast box blur here, you know, really. And let's, let's just really crank it up here. Let's just really oomph the crap out of it. Something like this. Yeah. Now we're going to set it to screen. Now we're going to go over to the effects and presets. And once again, look at hue and saturation. And we're going to colorize this. We're going to saturate it for the second here. And let's apply something a little bit more orange, something like this. We can always decrease saturation maybe to 75. And see, now we have a nice roaring fire. You can really see that saturation and that glowiness that you really look for in a good fire, right? I hope you enjoyed this and you found this useful. And uh, I'll be looking forward to what you create with this. Have a cheesy day.